Hey everybody, welcome back to Planet by Ear. I am Roger Fox, I'm your host, and today is a special edition. This is our Resurrection Sunday edition. So I've also brought some special friends with me today, Miss Krista Overby and Mr. Jonathan Quigley. Y'all give them a hand. Listen, before we get started, I want you to like, I want you to subscribe, I want you to comment, tell us what you think about it, go back and watch our first episode, all that. So let's jump right into it. How y'all doing? Doing great, You're Fox. Great, How are Fox. you? Man, I'm so glad that y'all <laughs> were able to come through and, and be a part of this. Um, so I want to just start off, and I'm going to start with the latest first, Krista. Mm -hmm. uh, who is Krista Overby? Like who, anybody who's not familiar with her, it's the first time seeing that, who would you say that you are? How would you describe yourself? Well, um, I'm, I'm me, you know. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way I know how to put it, but I'm a wife, I'm a mother. Okay. Um, I'm a singer. I'm an educator. You're a singer. Uh, I'm a makeup artist. Um, I feel like I can be, uh, you know, a bit of an entrepreneur when I kind of get my mind made up or whatever. But uh, I'm in an encourager of people. And I also think I'm a bridge. A bridge. Yeah. That's crystal. That's like gold because yeah. can you say why you say you're a bridge? Well, I feel like no matter what capacity I'm currently functioning in at the moment, I always end up doing the same thing. Bridges are designed to take people from one place over wow. to another. So if I were in a classroom as an educator, because I am a former music educator, I am taking my students from ignorance to knowledge. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I'm, I'm serving in the worship capacity, I'm taking people from the outer court into the inner court. Okay. Um, you know, my kids, as a mother, I'm taking them from child Hood, to, hopefully to, safely to adulthood, right. you know. So no matter where I, I serve, that's what I You'll always breathe. end up doing. You might want to copyright that or trade on that or something. <laughs> and will. And uh, I think that's so awesome because your maiden name is, is Bridges. Is Bridges? Yes. Is, 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 is that a maiden it, name? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Krista Overby, Mr. Jonathan Quigley. Man, same Fox. question. Man, I I just uh, I like to think that I'm a child of God and. Uh, a father, um, I don't always do uh, everything perfectly in life, but I'm, I'm out there trying to uh, do the best I can for them and for God, uh, family and friends. Um, I love music. I've been a musician my whole life. Uh, I love writing. Uh, that's something that's been passionate about me my whole life. So, And uh, one of the best things, I'm a good friend of yours. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, so Listen, y'all right. are just giving all the good stuff because <laughs> everything you said can really be summed up t-shirt that's right grace that's right i think that's 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 grace. cool so listen we want to jump in uh, i want to to give a kind of a good overview of who my guests are so uh the first thing we all like to talk about after that description is how did that start how did it start for both of you what i'm, I'm sure uh one thing I, I do love is all of us have different paths i have different upbringings have different um you know avenues that we've traveled through so i want to give us as an audience and even myself i want to know how did you get here? Like, what was the early mm -hmm. kind of thing that got you going? You say you've been doing it all your life. So all how right. did that start? For me, um, I think I can remember my sister telling me that when I was two and three years old, I'd crawl up the stairs to hear her radio going back then, okay. you know. And uh, But from a young age, I've always uh, loved to write songs. There's nobody sat down with me to, to write songs. I had a, a tape player back in the day that Daddy had at the house, it was not for that reason, and I just I saw that record button, and I just have been writing songs ever since. So uh, it's a passion that I've always had, um, just something that came natural to me. So uh, even from a, a young age, I was bothering my sisters and my brothers uh, singing around the house. And back then, uh, we had the tape player, but a lot of times it, I didn't really have access to it. So I would write something, you know, when I was eight years old, and even up till you know, older than that, and I would have to sing that over and over and over before right. I forgot it. Right. Because I would forget it. There's yeah, no oh, doubt oh, yeah, about yeah. it. So, yeah. How many songs you say, would you say you've written? Probably you just have to just put a number on it. Gosh, Rup Fox, I don't know. Uh, probably probably over a thousand. Right. I, I, I write a song just about every week or two. Yeah, I remember you telling um, me. That. So, it's, is that I have for no practice idea. or like just to, or just to, like it's in you, like you have to. Is it is a, a regimen you have, or do you just do it because like you just wake up with a song, you write it, or is it just a 
normal thing now. Man, it's just like part of me. It's the weirdest thing. Like I just, it's in my head, right? All my songs in the head, in my head before I put them to music, right? So um, in, in my musical parts, I, I write them in my head and then I, I put them down. So it's just something that's like, uh, if I'm riding down the road, a lot of times my radio's off and I'm literally yeah. going over, I'm trying to find a melody or something's in my head. Um, like that, so it's just it's just something that's always been in me. Like that, it's kind of weird. I try to do that mm -hmm. in the car, but usually I'm trying to learn music. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know, Crystal, mm -hmm. what about you? What what what's that early um, story, or what? How did you get here? Like I've been knowing you for a while. I've known both of you for a while, but I've been knowing you a while. Uh, uh, so yeah. I mean it, yeah. how did you get going? Like, All right. So my dad has been my pastor. Pretty yes. much my whole life. Shout out to and Pastor so, Bridges. Pops, love you. Um, so yeah, so in his younger day, because uh, this year he'll be he's celebrating forty years wow. of pastoring wow. at the same Ooh. church. Hallelujah. What's that? Uh, Sprinkle back to Spring church. Hill. Yes, Spring Hill. I've been there. And um, so you know, Dad used to go and do lots and lots of revivals. So when I was younger, I used to ask Daddy, "Can I go?" Because I've always been a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. And so I remember, I can't remember the name of the church, but anyway, one night. I said, Daddy, can I sing before you preach? But he had never heard me like sing out uh -huh. loud before. And on a whim, he was like, okay. I do not remember the name of the song. <laughs> I, I honestly don't remember. But I remember that's where I actually got started. Right. So it got to the point where people would ask Request. him, okay. is your Ooh. daughter coming? And can she <laughs> sing? sing. Uh -huh. that's, that's actually how I got my start. And so then um, my parents forced me to yes. be in choir mm -hmm. when I was in high school and I really didn't want to be in it because everybody had such bad things to say about the choral director at the time mm -hmm. and she is one of the most major pieces to my musical right. journey mm -hmm. this woman she retired but she taught me voice my senior year and she created and developed this love and appreciation for all genres not just the one I grew up singing, which was primarily gospel. And so God blessed me to go. I, I never paid a dime for my music education. Wow. I yeah. went to Jones College and USM, full scholarship. Yes. Got a chance to just have a wild uh, array of musical experiences. And it helped to shape and to mold me into who and what I am today. And um, and I've I've been doing it ever since. And every now and again, I run across somebody of like, you still sing? And I'm like, what else am I gonna do? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yes, I, I am. Right. You know. That's that's interesting because um, you saying that remind made me think of something. Um, you're he not heavily educated, but you're very educated yeah. musically. Yes. Are you? Are you? Because I look. <laughs> I I remember being in high school and saying I did not want to. Learn to read. I didn't want to get in because I did not want it to be a job. Like mm -hmm. looking back, that's the dumbest thing that I probably could did because I felt like it could have probably opened so many yeah. doors to not opportunities, but just to learning knowledge that I just ignorant of. Because you know, you I thought you know you, if you taught or you read and stuff like that, you was but it's it's such a gateway to so many things. So do you how how, how do you read? Do you I. I, I do. I I'm, I actually have a minor in music, uh, one of my really? degrees. Really? Yes, but to <laughs> say that I use it is 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 kind of up in the air because um, once I got introduced to to the Nashville numbers, I haven't mm -hmm. I haven't played a chord like from a chord sheet and, in over yes. almost fifteen twenty years. Wow. Um, and most of what I play is just by ear. So I think there. Um, I think Elton John said that same thing. He. He, did, he had very little, um, not that I'm anything like Elton John, but he had, um, you know, very little uh, musical background. Uh, but he started off playing by numbers and chords, and then he just he just kind of said, "I really let loose with my music right. once I let that go." So I'm not saying that's not important because it, right. it is. desperately is. But uh, you know, I think once you get to a certain level, um, yeah. the music just starts flowing out of you. I started, uh, I was looking for someone to kind of teach me because, um, mm -hmm. you know, at this age, I'm like hungry for it. And most people would say, well, I mean, you can play, you don't need to. And I was like, I don't know. And I, uh, <laughs> a friend of mine was saying that, uh, you know, musicians, uh, they should read. They can't play if they can't read. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine was like, well, explain Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. there's always different yeah. Yeah. 
paths that we take. And it's interesting to know. Like, I know Krista, yeah, she can break it down. I didn't know you had a minor in music, man. <laughs> I did. Like, yes, right. like, yeah. Wow. And I will say yeah. this. It has afforded me some opportunities to perform and minister on levels that I feel like I probably would not have access right. to mm-hmm. without that. Because it's like you're mashing up the different genres. Right. For example, um, some of the work I've done in New York at Ithaca College, it is always with the orchestra. Right. Mm-hmm. So there has to be a backdrop and a knowledge of how all of this works. And then when I bring mm-hmm. in the spirit portion, mm-hmm. it's it's a beautiful marriage right. of the two worlds. Mm-hmm. And so I definitely say for access to certain things, right. it's it's necessary. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And it's kind of encouragement, or I always tell people, learn as much as you can. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't limit yourself. Yeah. Be open to it. You know, learning to play by ear is not the way. Learning to play by reading is not the way. It's, it's you know, you have to try to be as mm-hmm. best as you can Combat. regardless. Yeah. Sure. That's right. Which yeah. that kind of leads us to this next place. You all kind of both mentioned it. Um, starting off, you know, what are you doing now? Um, I know um, even some of the opportunities you had at Ithaca College mm-hmm. were Share it with me. Um, so, starting there, being introduced there, what are you doing now? What what is Krista doing now? What so, is- I'm I'm currently serving as worship pastor at Life Church in Laurel. Shout out to, Shout life. Out to life Church. Right. Hey, <laughs> um, I've been there two and a half years. Um, it's it's been quite an experience, um, but I've I've learned a lot. I've grown a lot. Um, I'm currently uh, refocusing. Jonathan and I were just talking about the last two projects that I did, how long ago that was, which Fox has been a part of those. (laughs) And I will be honest that Jonathan Fox has really been on me for quite a while about recording. Mm -hmm. I always have a reason not to. but And I say this every time, Fox, but I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm serious. (laughs) I'm I'm ready. So I'm ready to record this year. Um, There's a book that I'm going to, to start working on in April. And um, a lot of the things that God has just deposited in me, I realize that they're a blessing to so many, but they're only a blessing if I get it out. Right. I have sure. to get that, that out. We yeah. talked yeah. about that. Yeah. We did a podcast, and, and that was kind of one of the things we talked about. So, Jonathan, what about you? You, he's a <laughs> like a machine. Like we, he's always doing something. Man, you know, the older I get, the more challenges they are. But um, you know, I'm a father. But uh, as far as music, music is just in me. It's just who I am. I can't imagine myself without music. Um, but um, put a pin there. Yeah, I got something for that. Go ahead. And but um, as far as music, my passion has kind of turned over the last fifteen years. Just although God has been in my life, my whole life mm-hmm. is solely towards Him. So my passion is for Him and what. I can do to help glorify his kingdom and get more people there. So I've been a worship pastor now for about uh, 10, 11 years. Mm-hmm. Um, locally just started at a new church. I'm loving it. Um, got a lot of projects going on. Mm-hmm. And some of the challenges that we're, we're facing and we're all going to face is um, – Getting back on tour or partial tours is really tough with a family. It is yeah. it is very tough, yeah. uh, and it's it's the kind of thing that sometimes you have to do sporadically um, over uh, times that your family can work through. Um, and like right now, I've been talking to uh, a couple different uh, national managers, and I can get the band on some national uh, shows again, which we were doing just. Uh, very, very frequently a few years ago, constantly. Um, but it, it takes a lot of sacrifice. It does. It takes a lot of sacrifice from the band and from families also. So I, I want to talk about this in both of you. Um, it meant so much. Um, but what you said, the sacrifice part of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how do you balance it? Like, how do you... I'm just being honest. I am horrible mm. because I can't. You know, I'm. If something's on like music, if I get a song, like you were saying, you write mm-hmm. something. If I get a song, I can't function until I can get yeah. it out. Mm-hmm. If it's an idea, or whatever, I have to like record it and listen back to it and say, okay, now I can't like move on. Yeah. Like so, with touring and, and moving like that, uh, how do you balance that with family, work, mm-hmm. other ministry? How, how do you how do you all do that? How I, do, I don't get a lot of sleep. That's one thing, because because the thing is, is my my children and I put this out there with them is 
I have to be their dad first, right. where I am in my life. Mm-hmm. Earlier, you know, before I had kids, it was a whole different world. Um, but now I have to be their dad first. So when they get in the bed at 8.30 or 9, is when I have my turn to, to start working. So if I get two hours in and then I'm usually up about 5.30 in the morning and I go to bed 11 or 12, you know, I may have to get a Coke. I don't drink coffee. So <laughs> a Coke or something. And the good thing, in fact, caffeine affects me. So, but yeah, I, I think you said something one time, Fox, like last year, a few months ago about I like to be around doers. And um, and I think for me, what, what that is, I've just, I, I just got something in me. I, I like to keep moving. Right. I don't like to stay stagnant. It, 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 is, it actually raises my anxiety not to That's be moving forward right. uh, in my musical journey and my life journey. You know, I'm gonna ask you that, Chris. But I want to ask you this: What you saying that if you're off, just say you vacation mm-hmm. or not a vacation, or you just got a day off, mm-hmm. how, how do you function? Do you? Because I'm miserable. Yeah. Like I feel like, you know, I have to. I feel anxious a lot. Yeah. Like um, I was actually off today, and I'm with my kids, and we were hanging out, and that's you know we're having fun. Yeah, um, yeah if I, I have to be doing something, you know, if yeah. I if I'm just by myself, I'm usually trying to get back in the studio working on a song, yeah. or I'm writing a song, um, because the studio really takes so much of my time. You know, one song. Uh, the the four, the, I just, we're just releasing this fourteen song record one track at a time, and this record took three and a half years. Right. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so it, because it's just it's just between family and and uh, church and everything else, everything else yeah, yeah. it's 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 tough to really make. And then you want it to be an amazing product or mm-hmm. something you can really showcase yeah. out there. You know, for me, for God, and and. Um, you know, but yeah, it's it's tough. <laughs> now, Chris, I know, like I said, I know both of you well. We've been friends for years. Your kids are a little older than yes. Jonathan's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the that dynamic's probably different. How do you balance that or how did you balance that? You know, kind of how did how did it work? Well, I, I I will say this that the right partnership makes all the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to my hubby, Howard Overby, the love of my life. Best thing that ever happened to me <laughs> outside of God saving my soul. <laughs> Shout um, out Howard. <laughs> <laughs> but um, having the right partnership that understands the demand, mm-hmm. that understands the creative process, because when you're a creative, it's like it almost doesn't stop. It doesn't. Even in my sleep, right. it's like mm-hmm. things rolling around him, even in my subconscious. And I have to just empty that in order to go mm-hmm. on about my right. day. Um, so, um, he has a really good understanding of the call, the demand, the push, the drive. And a lot of times, even when I'm physically depleted, why I go that extra step to get the job done. Uh, I am in a different season in life. All three of my children are in college right now. Prayers for that. (laughs) And so it does give me more flexibility to move around and do more. But even when they were little, I had to set proper boundaries. When I'm a mom, and my mother gave me the best advice because I was a choral director, I was minister of music, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, and I just feel like I was just split in 20 different directions. And she said, what you have to master is whatever you're functioning in at the moment, just be that. When you're a teacher, just be a teacher. When you're a mom, that just be a hard, mom. Christine. It's so that hard to so do. Hard. <laughs> it's so, but so that's hard. that's that it's you, there's a mastery. There's a mastery that you have to so. pursue so that you don't get anxious, so that you don't get oh. overwhelmed, and so you don't get burnt out. Right, because you get pulled in. Like you know, sometimes I've been to been in places where I feel like I was given every aspect less than I could because mm-hmm, I was mm-hmm. that work thinking about music. I'm at music thinking about work. I'm at church thinking about something. You know, mm-hmm. you, you're thinking about so many different things, and mm-hmm. that's that's probably. And I would even say this: a, yeah. a pivot for me, uh, even just from a mental space, was when my 11 year old niece got killed in a car accident, yeah. because it happened on such a normal day. Yeah. That, as I think back, like what was I doing on that day that maybe I could have done different? Right. But the answer is there was nothing, nothing I could have right. done differently, except the day before, maybe just 
hugged her a little longer. Right. Mm. But so busy, Priorities. so often we're so busy trying to move to the next yeah. thing that we don't savor those. Mm. Just it's just moments. a moment. Being present. You know? And so I'm right. I'm learning that instead of trying to jump to the next thing, stop being Martha all yeah. the time. Yeah. And just choose the better part and sit at Jesus' feet right. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is that is great. Listen, I don't know if y'all caught that, but being present in that moment is key. And that, like I said, we do, creatives do suffer burnouts, the highest highs, some of the lowest lows, mm -hmm. and part of that because we're so stretched. Um, yeah. Jonathan, I do want to jump back and <laughs> and pick it back on. You have a you haven't always been. Have you always done Christian music, or you didn't do that? That's not where you kind of started. I want you. So to it's kind of a hybrid. Um, I've always, for, not always, I started definitely not Christian music. I started in radio rock and folk music, playing, <laughs> starting at 13, 14 years old, playing, really? yes, playing uh, uh, some of the uh, restaurants, and that's the only place you could get in, and I was not very good back then. Uh, <laughs> it was really, really uh, bad. I made an album before I got into college. It was not a very good album. <laughs> Um, there's a lot about that, just the learning process. Um, but, um, you know, it's taken me where the, the journey I have am, you know, walking down that path today. It's been a 30-year journey, and it's yeah. hard. I was, I was driving over here, and I was trying to think about that a little bit because I figured you'd ask me something about that because people have asked me that before. Um, but, yeah, and then it turned into, and I'll tell you how it did this. I used to... Um, I was singing a lot of songs like James Taylor and, and just yeah. stuff. But um, I started singing songs that were more rockish and Hootie and the Blowfish. And before that, my voice was really bad. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. And, but then I saw there was this little bit of this power that came from the, that different type of depth to people's yeah. voice like Darius Rucker. And it changed me, and it changed everything about everything I started doing. And then eventually I found myself um, touring with rock bands, uh, mainly one rock band, but different. I say rock bands because I don't know how many musicians I've went, you know, in and out of over the years. Yes. Um, I dare to say over 100. And, um, but it, it took me to a place uh, where I am today in that um, – I, I did learn a lot from from that experience. There's a lot of things I, I was proud of and a lot of things I wasn't proud of. Um, but uh, it, it made me the musician that I am. Uh, and uh, then God kind of, there were some things that happened, some major things that happened that God kind of uh, woke me up to that I could not give up in my life. And I finally was able to give those up. Mm -hmm. And it cost me a lot of money and a lot of time. Uh, and then I'm... You know, and, and ever since then, to be honest with you, I haven't ever looked back because I have felt more free with my music as a worship leader than yeah. I ever did yeah. before. Um, so, yes, yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> like I said, I, we, you know, musicians, particularly men, are horrible. We will play with <laughs> each other for decades mm -hmm. and probably can't tell you yeah. very little information about each other. Yeah. So, I'm learning, man. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm still tripping on this modern music, yeah. with you, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. which which we're kind of in the present, talking about the present stages of our life, and um, two things I really want to kind of dive into that both of you all are very familiar with. I got a friend, Melvin Calhoun. Shout out to Melvin, that always says ministry versus industry. Mm -hmm. Like those are two components that particularly Christian artists deal with. Mm -hmm. um, there's a ministry side that we that is sacred, and then we have to know the business, the industry. Mm -hmm. um, I saw something earlier right now. There was a bill in Congress p passing to get musicians a penny for mm -hmm. every stream, yeah. opposed to the point zero 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 whatever it yeah. is, mm -hmm. which will which will definitely help creatives you know, kind of get revenue from back. Mm -hmm. It costs to make an album. Mm -hmm. It costs Absolutely. to make a single. It costs mm -hmm. to come in. Spaces and do those things. So, mm -hmm. what 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 is, I'm gonna ask Crystal first. What's your take on that ministry kind of versus industry? Um, I, I feel you need to know both well to mm -hmm. be successful, whatever you deem to be success. But how do you feel about that? I think there's definitely a need for an integration of the two if you're being serious about um, 
being an artist that, that no matter what genre you represent, right. simply because um, people can appreciate your gift anywhere and at any time, mm. but people can also take advantage. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's an appreciation and then there's an advantage that can be taken of if you're ignorant to how what industry standards are, how business deals work. And so even if the genre that you're representing is of Christ, if, if it is godly, you still, the, the scripture teaches us to be wise as a serpent, right. just be harmless as a dog. Mm -hmm. And so that means that I, I need to have a duality. I, I can be pure in my worship, but when I go in the boardroom to talk business, yeah. we're going to talk business. Right. And, yeah. and it's going to be done decently and it's going to be done in order, but, um, and not being afraid to be lamb right. and lion. Right. Yeah, There's I, a time for yeah, both, that if is. you will. Mm -hmm. Just I know we talk about radio and, yeah. and all the things. And, you know, you 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 have to be, I mean, careful because you get caught up in numbers mm -hmm. and streaming mm -hmm. and yeah. all those things. So how do you kind of balance that as an you know, artist? Um, yeah, so this is something that I have done a lot of thought about. And mainly because... As a worship leader, as a um, trying to center my life around Christ, uh, Christ ca calls us to lay down our life for Him right. too, right? And because He's laid down our, His life for us, and we're, you know, so to get away from that old life is really hard in in a world that if you're a musician and you go on Facebook or, or Instagram, TikTok, whatever, you put something out there. Uh, about 99% of everything that's put out there is not, it doesn't go viral. It's, it's not something that is, uh, you know, just is heard by the masses. In right. fact, if you post something, anything, it's, it's probably not going to be heard by as many people as you think it is, even right. if you tag friends now. And it used to not be like that. People that got into uh, Facebook, especially in the early days, had a tremendous amount of gain compared to what you have now. In fact, if you don't if you don't pay to yeah, play man, nowadays, yeah. you don't get your music heard. Right. So, as for me, um, I, I'm not out there um, to be. I'm not in in it for to be famous or right. or to really that type of exposure at all. But if you don't have exposure, if you don't put yourself out there, no one will hear the message that right. God's calling you to to put out there with your music or with um, you know just sharing the gospel in general. So it's it's a tough uh, a tough thing. But I think you know the thing thing I think about as I have to remember before I get on stage, before I go online or whatever I'm doing is. God calls us to do whatever we do, do it for the glory of God, right. not for ourselves. So mm -hmm. that's what I try to focus on. I don't do try it perfectly, and yeah. I make a lot of mistakes. So. It, it is. It's, it's kind of like um, when you were just saying it made me think, we're called to be fishers of men. Mm -hmm. yeah. But to, to mm -hmm. fish, you got to go out there. You, <laughs> you got to have some tools. You got to throw you know? that rod. So yeah. um, mm -hmm. it is something that I think we're is evolving, I think, in the next five to ten years. Um, we'll see growth in that because I mean I don't I'm sure I can speak for you I can't do that but you want to see some return on investment Absolutely. for yeah. the things you want that don't mean you yeah. want to be you know I'm not expecting to take advantage of people but if I put yeah. you know because it is expensive all those things yeah. Yeah. Um, which Jonathan you have led to the next thing <laughs> that I want to talk about so perfectly this is actually Resurrection Sunday mm -hmm. weekend um, mm -hmm. Easter, you know, whatever you call it, mm -hmm. um, but it's the time we celebrate Christ's resurrection. Mm -hmm. um, how do y'all feel? What, what, what does that mean to you? What does that, when I say, when you hear that, or this time of the year, for me, it's, it's like a, I mean, all those times, even Christmas means something, or it's a different feeling for me. Yeah. How, what does that do for you? For me, it's, it's everything, because without him, uh, for out his sacrifice, man, I, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know where I'd be in, in a few years when I leave this place. Right. Um, it would be very, very hard to obtain a life beyond this, this earth. And, um, you know, you think about the Old Testament and what you had to do to right. to win God's favor, you know, or for him to forgive you. Um, and all you have to do now is ask. And it's all because of that one day. Um, that he gave his life up for us, and um, 
allowed us to make the decision, have decisions in our life to choose him. Because one thing I think about in um, Easter and my life in general is why are we here? And it comes down to choices. What choices are you willing to make for God, for Jesus? And um, I think, you know, I think that's going to be a deciding factor when we get there and we stand before yeah. those gates. So. Chris? I don't know. Easter is always a time of, I don't know, impossibilities become impossibilities. Yeah, it's, like, it's, like an, it's like an excitement. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's like, <laughs> bro got up out the grave in three days. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, and so it's like this freshness, this anticipation, mm-hmm. this excitement that any thing is possible because the same Christ, the same God that raised Jesus from the dead, like he's living inside of me and I get a chance to represent him. Mm -hmm. That's like top tier. Oh yeah. Top tier. I I think it's, and you know, we, we call it in the church, like our Super Bowl Sunday. Right. That's Mm -hmm. the time Mm -hmm. where we really evangelize. We can really, um, and you know, whether people are churched or in there, they kind of know about Easter. You know, yeah. and this is our t- chance to yeah. really be a witness. I think it's, I don't know, like, I, you know, it's, it's really unexplainable because mm-hmm. it's a time that, um, you know, you see even the seasons changing mm-hmm. and you just feel like it's going from cold, which I hate, <laughs> I hate cold too. to, you know, to that time. Um, last question before we move on. How do you all think music just is different now than when you re- started? Like, what would you say the one thing that like we used to do this, which there are many that we do that we don't do or we do do now. What, what would you say? Oh, that that's easy for me is uh, production. You can everybody is putting out music. Everybody. People that that don't even know how to play. Is that a key, good or bad? I, I, you know, I think it's 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 bad for uh, some of the the musicians that spend their entire life playing and and learning and mastering their 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 art uh but at the same time it's a free society and hey and, and you, go, you, you wanna, go to best buy now get, right. get ready so <laughs> now, so instead of being able to play that keyboard you can get on another keyboard and or you, you can drag make, and drop that's right and drag mm-hmm. and drop and you can make so um and then also uh, i'll say this is uh media has really changed the way that music is heard, yeah. the way that stars are born. Yeah, uh, you know, exactly. so exactly. yeah, it's 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 definitely different. <laughs> What's different? I, I'd have to agree crazy. with Jonathan. I, I think I would approach it more from a, like a performance standpoint, not mm-hmm. m- the production standpoint, because <clears throat> you don't have to be talented, <laughs> truly, truly, truly gifted. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. If you're a good entertainer, you can get away. If, if you can get people to pay attention to you, yeah. you can get your music out there. Mm-hmm. That's true. As opposed to like mm-hmm. people that's like a unicorn, like a Whitney Houston. Or, yeah. like, who else can sing like her? Or Aretha. Like, or an Aretha. Know, you know what I'm you saying? Like who, uh, yeah. who else can do that? Yeah. Like imitate it like down to the yeah. T. Yeah. You know, and and so now we have all these different and and hey, I'm yeah. not hating on anybody's yeah. game or do or your thing. It is they do do <laughs> it, do just it different. well. That's right. I'm just saying, you know. And then like you said, with the rise of social media, and then we can't forget the whole AI element. That's yeah. another conversation yes. for another day. <laughs> um, th- then there's this opportunity where people are actually more important than what they think, yeah. simply because they're able to command an audience yeah. rather than it organically growing mm-hmm. and it being attracted to your gift and to your talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Time, mm-hmm. Timing has really, yeah. um, you know, changed all that. It really has. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> Listen, I'm going to do, do a little quick game. I'm going to throw an idea. You got to give me the first thing you think about. Okay, I'm, we're gonna, Chris is going to go first. Thank oh, God. Okay. So, <laughs> so you, get, you get saved this. Okay, favorite song to sing? <laughs> favorite song to sing? Um... I will always love you. Okay, I got a thought. I got um, probably a Crowder song. I love Crowder. Um, maybe um, God really loves us. I love that song. Okay, favorite song. Oh gosh, Fox. That's that. Uh, I can't. I mean, I got so many. I need to just pick one. Got to pick one. You got to um, pick one. I'm gonna say When Sunday Comes, Daryl Coley. I got. I ain't never. Okay. Okay. <laughs> next time we somewhere. <laughs> You already know what I'm playing. Go ahead. Love song by Third Day. Okay. Uh, favorite artist? 
Mm. Mm. Right now, I'm on Cynthia Arrivo. Yeah, I like she Cynthia. She is bad Cynthia. to the bone, man. I like her version of, uh, uh, her version with uh, Leslie. What's Leslie's last name? Leslie the Odom. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where okay, is the I'm love? Yes. Which is a, a beautiful, horrible song that misses. Anyway, uh, favorite artist. That's really tough, but I, I'd probably say Third Day is one of my uh, my big inspirations uh, in the last 20 years. Okay. Any artist you want to collaborate with, they can be the cease or P.J. Alive. Morton. That was easy, okay. Uh, I'd like to do some work with the band called Unspoken. Um, okay. I was uh, working on that and then kind of got pushed to the side, so I'd like to, to work with them next. Okay. If it wasn't you, if you were not do, if you were not doing music, what would you be doing? Something in the beauty industry for sure. Beauty. Clothes, makeup, hair, something. Something. I'd probably be doing what I'm doing on the side now. Is is you know IT. I, I've always been able IT. to. Do Man, you IT got a work. lot going on. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, um, best advice you've ever been given. Hmm. Hmm. You, you get an extra time to think about your um, things. Best advice I've ever been given would be. Um, What's private needs to remain private. Okay. Yeah. I've got two. I can't tell you one, but two, the, the, <laughs> the first, the first one is uh, I'm going to say is from Hartley Peavy. Uh, years ago, I wrote him a letter, and he wrote me back, uh, and and this was 30 years ago, and he told me that uh, to be persistent. He said persistence is the key in life. Uh, and uh, he and never will forget that. And the second thing, really the most important, is before my mother died when I was young, she was on the bed laying there, and uh, she had her Bible in her hand, and she said, don't take anybody's word for this Bible. Say, so you read it for yourself. Mm. And I said, you read it over and over, and you make your decisions in life based off of that. And can I just elaborate on the, the private thing? Go ahead, go ahead. So um, I was going it's through a season. by ear. Yeah, <laughs> I was going through a season in life. I, was, I had a lot of personal things going on in my personal life, but it was taking a public turn, if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah. And I wanted to address that, that. publicly. Yeah. That's that's that that's another thing that's different now. Yeah. Um, you know, we always got some viral on the internet that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Twenty years ago, we didn't have those opportunities. Did not. So, that's right. And now, you know, I'm sorry. Go but ahead. yeah, I, I mean, it's it's so hard to allow someone else to control your narrative. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, the best advice that I was given was to be like David was with Saul. Right. He had so many yeah. opportunities yeah. to say, do him bad. Say behave wisely. Though. Yeah, he that, behaved that, wisely, yeah, yeah. and Saul grew more fearful of yeah, him yeah. due to that. So that that I just wanted to put that in proper yeah. context. Man, yeah. that's 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 one reason for this show is so creators can have a narrative. So yeah. Sometimes we don't, especially if you're a musician like me, I don't sing. I mean, if, if I you see me singing, it's by default. Ain't nobody else there. I can't find nobody. Uh, so, but you do well, though. Uh, you do well. I but I like to, because I like to stay behind and just play and do that. And a lot of times, narratives are created for you. Mm -hmm. And I want to mm -hmm. kind of change that. Okay? Most memorable moment. Mm. Like, yeah, anything. You know. Anything? Yeah. I'd say probably the first time I performed with the Ithaca College mm -hmm. or Orchestra because they're so unchurched in yeah. that region. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's it's real dry up there. <laughs> but to see people experience the power of God oh, wow. in a purely authentic right. um, and organic way, it was probably top five of my lifetime. Wow. Uh, probably years ago at the Christian Cross Festival, just looking out and seeing a sea of people worshiping, and um, we threw in some some worship songs into our set, and it was just, uh, I think uh, that was with 10th Avenue North uh, years ago, and just seeing all those yeah. people in front of you worshiping, because as, mus as a, a longtime performer, I think a lot of performers Sometimes you don't even see what's in front right, of you, right, right. but I remember I remember that moment. It was it was special. Um, yeah. Okay. Last question. Biggest accomplishment or greatest accomplishment? Greatest accomplishment, I say this unapologetically, my children. Oh, oh. If it's three things I know I ever did You're right, right. Oh. it's Nadia, Abraham, Gabby, and then I'm a bonus mom, so Lincoln and Haley. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I can't argue with that. My 
my Caitlin Gracie and Abigail are definitely the best thing that's ever happened to me. Musically, um, I feel like uh, this album that we're going through right now is really is such a culmination yeah. of uh, so many people involved. Um, I've done a lot of albums with a lot of big name people, and they've just been it's been wonderful. It's been such an experience. Um, I think this is like the tenth album I've done in my life. Um, but something about this album, it was so collaborative with so many right. people and it's finally here and working with people like Thomas Burton and everybody. Yeah. It's Shout out amazing. Thomas. Shout out to Thomas. <laughs> so he's in the back. Y'all. Uh, yeah. so, um, do you, with, with that, do you think that's possible or how, well, how much credit will you, would you give to that for how we could technology, how we do that now? Oh man, a lot because like, you couldn't do that. The majority of my production, um, I'm you know I'm sending my tracks off right. to Nashville Outsourced. because Source if them. I um, if I bring people into my studio, they have to learn the song. You know, we're, you're talking about hours. Whereas if I send my song to some of my Nashville buddies right. and I pay them, I have my track back yeah. in a few hours, right. and it's phenomenal. Listen, um, I've gotten so used to that. I I did a session with the you know we was me and a friend we were working on it, and I was like, this is not it. Mm -hmm. Like, man, mm -hmm. can I just pay you? And yeah, you just get back. Yeah. It's just technology has really, really, really been a blessing in that. I um, also kind of made a legacy. But anyway, <clears throat> <laughs> I want to start ask you this, Krista. We're talking about going for future. What's next for Krista Overby? Krista Overby is going to record this year. Y'all heard it. I, you heard it here. You heard it, and it is the truth. I and, just want to be there. It is going to be in writing. It's somewhere. And I, I really want to do it. Um, I, of course, I don't mind doing it in a church setting. Of right. course, I'm going to do it in a church setting. But I would love to do it uh, like the PJ Morton style, which is kind of something like yeah. this. Mm. Because I feel like it will, um, I hate to use the word automatic, but I'm going to use that. It will automatically position it to appeal to more than one metron, right. if that makes any sense. I'm not just appealing to church people. I'm appealing to unchurched people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if it's in a place that's kind of neutral, neutral, if that makes any sense, right. no disrespect, right. no compromise, mm -hmm. I feel like the draw will be a, a little bit different and God will be glorified either way. Right. I think, um, before I ask you that, Jonathan, I think one thing that I've seen a rise of is artists, particularly artists, wanting to evangelize, evangelize, not just cater to the ones we've known all right. growing up. Like, yeah. hey, let's go find the people that don't know. Let's mm -hmm. share that message with them. I've seen like a significant rise in that in in and some of that in you know unorthodox methods. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. what, what's your what's next for I know you got a I know you got a whole <laughs> lot going on. What, what's, what's so uh right now we're releasing uh we're I Maybe telling a story, but I think we're on about song six or seven yeah. of a fourteen song release. Uh, we got several. My more Savior videos. story. <laughs> we got a lot more videos coming, yeah. and um, so that's going on. Uh, Want to pick up some national touring, which we've already got a couple dates. We're going to start picking up um, more touring when we can, and uh, I'm also right now working on a. Two different records. One of them is with my buddy Matt Lane. Matt. Uh, Matt, yeah, he's phenomenal. And it's more of a, a rock record, a Christian rock. And then uh, something we, we've got to talk about is I've, I've got um, uh, uh, a record, three to four songs ready for a Christmas album release. I need okay. to, to get quickly finished. And also something a new like a four song away. worship. It's true worship, straight worship that I want to do. So this is coming in the future. So Okay. Cool. So we got an album. We got Krista's album. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> and um, last question, uh, and it's kind of a piggyback on our uh, earlier question, where I said, "What advice have you ever been given? What advice would you give? If you, like somebody who's seen this first first time, or they know you, they look up to either one, you know, mm -hmm. both of you. What would you? What advice would you give to that person? Um. I I would always start here, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay. Don't lean to what you think. Because yeah, it ain't what you think. It's, it's really not what you think. It's not what you think. Acknowledge him in everything you do, and then he'll show you the path to take. And so to me, that cuts out a lot of unnecessary mistakes. 
And I feel like I've, I've heard my dad say this. He says, a wise man can learn from his own mistakes, right. but an even wiser man <laughs> can learn from someone else's. Right. And so, you know, just taking the time on the front end right. to, to plug into what God may be saying in your life. It's okay to have a muse, yeah. you know, or somebody yeah. that, or a mentor, but realize that your path may be, be different. different. It may Very be, it, there may be variables that their path takes and yours does not, but be okay with that. Be okay with who, how, what God has made you to be. Mm-hmm. And then just don't let nobody beat you being you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. John? What advice would you give? Man, I think uh, what I would give uh, is whatever your gift is uh, to perfect that gift as best you can. You're never going to be perfect in life, but uh, don't just step in and think that things are going to work out. Yeah. Uh, be prepared. Uh, if your gift is playing guitar, play that guitar every day yeah. for many, many years and, and be ready to be called upon, whether it's singing the same thing, uh, whether it's your lyrics, your voice, Whatever uh, songwriting, uh, it, it takes a long time to get um, for a lot of songwriters to become proficient in what they do. Worship, you know, the same thing. Persistence, Persistence. working hard. Okay. It's 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 not. If you really want to do something with your life, it's it's all about hard work. It really is. It is. There's no easy road. It sure is not. <laughs> Listen, guys, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I have had. Uh, I've learned a lot today and i'm really grateful for <laughs> both of you being here so um last question thank you. i guess a told story contact how do we contact you how, i mean how do we find you youtube youtube facebook instagram mm-hmm. website yeah yes your 10 digits <laughs> 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 not just playing yeah. Yeah. No, how, how do we find you, you can look me up on uh, facebook krista overby that's k-r-i-s-t-a-o-v-e-r-b-y and also on instagram i'm K Overby 2020 mm-hmm. because that's the year I got married. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm on K Overby 2020. I honestly can't remember what my TikTok is because I'm not really on TikTok. TikTok. Like that. I'm gonna put you I'm know? gonna put it in the, the description. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. John? So any of the platforms is slash my savior story. Yeah. Uh, and then mysaviorstory.org. And you're also welcome to go on mysaviorstory.org. There's a lot of resources there, touring information and um, all our music, all our videos. And you also can upload your own video yeah. to share your story of how Christ has been in your life. So Yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm going to throw this in here because I, you know, I, um, I'm a member <laughs> but uh you can go on website and create from uh, upload your testimony and yeah. those testimony will be shared at events if you know um i think that's so Amen. great <laughs> just ministry yeah. uh, just knowing each other's story and how we overcome mm-hmm. um, so listen this has been an episode of planet by ear we're going to do a song together okay uh i'm going to put all the their contact information in the comments also going to tag everything else we've talked about and i want you to do me a favor like subscribe share and get this message out this has been episode two playing it by ear this world it gets brighter every day we found our hope in the promise Jesus made And then our sin Starts to show its face again And we fall short When the best of us gives in What can wash away my sins Heal this broken heart again It's nothing but the blood of Jesus What can make me whole again Save me from this world I'm in Oh, nothing but the blood Nothing but the blood Just as I am Oh, just as I am
Gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. Thank you, Lord. It's powerful. Just won't 